Welcome to the first part of beginning Acrobat JavaScript. This series of videos was derived from an all-day class. To make it suitable for recording, it's been divided into a hierarchy of major sections, minor sections, and individual topics, each of which is only a few minutes long. Feel free to skip around to the bits and pieces you are interested in. However, in order to get a proper grounding, I would strongly suggest that you watch the intros of each of the major sections before delving into the details of the topic. If you are new to Acrobat JavaScript, please watch all parts of the Introduction to Acrobat JavaScript, of which this video is the first part. As a companion to this video series, I've also recorded a session on core JavaScript basics. If you haven't used JavaScript before, you'll find this information helpful for understanding the scripts presented here, and of course, for writing your own scripts. The three major sections of this series are an introduction to Acrobat JavaScript, which explains the relationship between Acrobat and JavaScript, and provides some simple scripting examples that will ease you into the world of Acrobat scripting. Form scripting, which covers scripts used to add interactive and dynamic features to PDF documents. And automation scripting, which covers scripts used to automate document creation and processing. So, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a full-featured, object-based programming language. It's an international standard, and it's more properly referred to as ECMA script or ECMAScript. JavaScript is not Java. Java is a completely different programming language. This is an unfortunate naming conflict and causes a lot of confusion. It exists because of an unfortunate marketing decision made by Netscape. However, it's just important to remember that JavaScript and Java are two completely different languages. JavaScript was developed at Netscape in 1996 as a way of programming client-side dynamic features in web pages. They could have built a narrowly focused browser-based scripting language, but they didn't. Instead, they built a very rich and easy-to-use general-purpose programming language that could be integrated into any application, not just web browsers. And this is the key idea behind JavaScript, that it can be used to script any application. In order to do this, JavaScript is what's called an interpreted language. This means that a piece of software called the interpreter is used to execute the JavaScript code directly without any intervening steps. We can literally type code into the interpreter and watch it execute. Netscape designed and built the JavaScript interpreter and they give it away for free. So anyone can download the interpreter from the Netscape website and integrate JavaScript into their own applications. Now, the JavaScript interpreter doesn't know anything about the application. It just executes JavaScript code. So how is it that it can be used to script an application? Well, there are always two parts to a JavaScript programming environment. The JavaScript interpreter, which executes the core JavaScript language, and a set of objects that connect the interpreter to the application. This set of objects is usually called the Document Object Model, or DOM for short. So Netscape provides the interpreter, and the application developer creates the DOM to connect JavaScript to the application. Here's a simplified diagram of how it all works. Our JavaScript program, which is just a bunch of lines of JavaScript code in plain text, is fed line by line into the JavaScript interpreter, which then executes the code. Any reference to the application-specific DOM objects are routed out of the interpreter and into the application. All the interpreter needs to know is of the existence of these DOM objects. It then uses them instead of its own internal logic to execute the DOM code. In our case, the application is Acrobat, and it has three separate DOMs. The standard Acrobat JavaScript DOM, which was introduced in Acrobat 3, and is the oldest of all the DOMs. The XFA DOM, which is for handling lifecycle form scripts. It was introduced in Acrobat 6, and then formally documented in Acrobat 7. And then there's the 3D Graphics DOM, for handling scripts on 3D annotations. For this series of videos, we'll be covering the standard Acrobat JavaScript DOM, which is the oldest and most broadly used of all the Acrobat DOMs. In the next video, we'll see what kinds of things Acrobat JavaScript can be used for.